you have the pedigree and peel right there, the little solve right triangles. Just as a reminder, I think everybody knows that the A squared is B squared is the C squared. But here's what I want to make sure everybody has a good grip on. You don't just assign those however you want to. C must be the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the side that the right angle is pointing to. Okay, that right angle is the little point on the uh, corner of that square. Wherever that's pointing, that is always your hypotenuse. So you've got to make sure that you're very, very careful about that when you're assigning these variables. <clears throat> Uh, that's a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. It's always got to be C. Now the other two legs doesn't matter. A can be on the uh, vertical side and B can be on the horizontal side, or sometimes they're not completely horizontal and vertical. Uh, a and B really don't matter, just so that they're the legs. But C must be the hypotenuse. All right. So let's start with example one here. We're going to find the missing side. And we're going to round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Sometimes it will come out even, sometimes it won't. So, <clears throat> we have 9x and 15. Which side is C? 15. Okay, 15 is our C. So, let's make sure that we set this up correctly. It doesn't matter whether the x comes first or the 9 comes first. I don't know. I always go left to right. So, I put the 9 first when I'm setting up my equation. And I always encourage you to set it up. Don't try and just start typing stuff into your calculator and figuring it out. Set it up so I can see how you set up the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now you can use your calculator. 9 squared is 81. Uh, 15 squared, I think, is 225. I'm going to double check. 15 squared, yeah, 225. Okay, now we have to solve for x. We've got to get x by itself, so we're going to start by subtracting 81. This is usually where most people kind of get a little um, off uh, with the solving. <clears throat> they either move things to the wrong side or something like that. So subtract 81, we get 144. Then final step, we take the square root to get rid of the x squared. We want just x. Well, the square root of 144 is 12. <clears throat> So x equals 12, that's the missing side. They gave us units, so put units with it, 12 feet. So if you want to label it on the triangle, you just want to put it at the bottom of your work. Doesn't matter, just so that I can see that x equals 12 feet. <coughs> All right, number two, which side is C? This time it's the x. Okay, this time it's the x. So this is actually the easiest uh, scenario because there's not as much involved in the solving. We've got 8.3 squared plus 5.7 squared equals c squared. Guess what? In this case, we don't have to move things from side to side. We can just type in the left side of our equation, 8.3 squared plus 5.7 squared. <clears throat> and I missed my decimal. 5.7 squared, okay, that's 101.38 is equal to c squared. We are not finished. Typically, your numbers should be pretty close in size. So if you said 101 is your answer, that should probably be a little bit of a red flag. 101 is way bigger than 8.3 and 5.7. Uh, so it said round to the nearest tenth. So 10.1 is our C 10.1 meters in this case. 10.1 meters. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I want to remind you of or inform you of, you may not have ever heard this before, but the hypotenuse should always be the longest side of your triangle. Okay, the hypotenuse should always be the longest side. So when you're solving one or two on number one, your answer, you know it should be smaller than 15 because 15 is the hypotenuse. The two legs are always shorter than the hypotenuse. Uh, number two, you should know that your answer should be bigger than 8.3 because you're looking for the hypotenuse. 8.3 is the longer leg. 
when we look at number three, okay, we should tell ourselves before we even start, my answer should be less than 15. My answer should be less than 15 because 15 is my hypotenuse. So let's set up this one. 14 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. So 14 squared is 196. 15 squared is 225. We found that one a minute ago. Getting x by itself, we subtract 196. So 225 minus 196 is 29. Now, unfortunately, 29 is not a perfect square. So you can either write your answer as the square root of 29, but that doesn't really tell us a whole lot because I don't know what the value of the square root of 29 is. I know it's a little bit more than 5 because 5 squared is 25, and I know it's less than 6 because 6 squared is 36, but I don't know its exact value. So go ahead and work out the square root to get approximately 5.4. Okay. That means a little bit more to us, but I just I did want to show you the square root thing because sometimes uh, the answers will be in square root form on the final exam. Okay? Now, hopefully you've done the Pythagorean theorem before. This looks very familiar. You're thinking, yes, find when something easy, right? Maybe, hopefully. Okay? Um, now, let's look at applying it a little bit, okay? Now, this should also be reviewed. Area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height. The kicker is your height has to be perpendicular to your base, okay? The height must be perpendicular to the base. So, on these problems, we want to find the area of the triangle. Now, just because on number four they gave us two measurements, that does not mean those are the two measurements we're supposed to use. We've got to have one half, that's always, we've always got that. We've got to have the base. Did they give us the base of this triangle? No, they didn't give us the base. Did they give us the height? Yes. So we have to find the base. Well, to find the base, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the base. So we've kind of got to do like a little intermediate work before we can actually find the area and answer the question. Okay, so 6 squared plus, I'm going to say D squared since the base is what we're looking for. You can use X, you can use whatever you want to, but I'm just using that um, since I'm looking for the base. So 36 plus D squared is equal to 100. When we subtract 36 from both sides, we get 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. So that means our base is 8. Now we can proceed with finding the area. Area equals 1 half times the base times, which one's the height, 6 or 10? 6. Okay, because that is perpendicular to my base right here. They form a right angle. Okay, the 10 is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is not going to be your height. So there are a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, you can do 1 half times 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Okay. Now, they didn't give us units here, but I do want to mention that area. Your units are always squared. So if they gave you feet, that would be 24 feet squared. If they gave you meters, it would be 24 meters squared. I'm just going to write units squared so that You've got that point right there. Okay, so uh, let's look at number five. Okay, this one's a little bit different. It's like two triangles that are backed up against each other. So they give us part of the base. Five is just part of the base. We've got to find that other part um, because we cannot assume that it's just split in half. And it's kind of drawn so that you can tell but it's not exactly halfway there. So we need to find that base. But well, let's think about the problem that we just did. Zone in on this side of the triangle. Okay, we've got a hypotenuse of 10, and we just have a hypotenuse of 10. One of our legs is 8, one of our legs is just 8. So what does it make sense that this other leg is going to be? It's 8. 
Because it's just the other missing piece. Okay, it's just the other missing piece. So, you know, you can use common sense like that sometimes. Okay. But if you didn't see that, that's fine. You can do the Pythagorean theorem and then hello, the answer is going to be six. All right. So let's find the area. One half times what's the length of our base this time? The whole base. Eleven. The whole base is eleven. You gotta pay attention to that detail right there. Times the height is eight. So this time I'm going to do 1 half times 8 is 4, and 4 times 11 is 44. Okay, 44 is the area of that triangle. Okay, now for number 6. Number 6, we're going to have to, let's see here, what are we going to have to figure out before we can find the area? What pieces do we have to find? The height. And the other part of the base. Okay, we're going to have to find the height and the other part of the base. Which one can we find first? The height. Okay, you're right. We can find the height first. We can't find the other base because we got to have two out of the three sides to use the Pythagorean here. For this triangle, we've only got one side right now. Once we find our height, we'll have the other side. Okay, so let's do the Pythagorean theorem with the triangle on the left. 12 squared, I don't know where that's the x right there is coming from. 12 squared plus, I'm going to use h, since I'm talking about the height, h squared is equal to 35 squared. 35 is our hypotenuse. So, I know 12 squared is 144. Let's find out what 35 squared is. Ooh, big number. 144 plus h squared is equal to 1,225. Subtract 144 from both sides. We get 1,081. Then we take the square root. And we get that our height is 32.87. Seven, nine. I'm just going to keep several decimal places for the moment. Okay, so that's our height. We now know the height, but we still got to find the other part of our base. Um, so, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> when I set up the Pythagorean theorem, just to keep things exact, I'm going to write h squared, okay, even though we, we just found h, I'm just writing h squared there so that I'll just use this number. H squared was equal to 1,081. Now, you don't have to do that. You can write out the decimal and square it uh, if you really wanted to. Uh, but that just keeps it exact. And 59 squared is 3,481. So let's subtract. The 1,081. So b squared is equal to 2,400. And then we take the square root of that. And we get that the other part of our base is 48.99. Okay. So finally, we can find our area. Area equals one half times the base. The base is 12 plus 48.99 times the height, which was 32.879. And if you wanted to keep the square roots in there, you're more than welcome to. That would give you a more exact answer, but I bet it's not going to differ all that much. One half times 12 plus 48.99 times 32.879. I'm just curious how much the answer will differ by, so I'm going to do it both ways. Um, I'm going to leave the square roots in there 